Okay, I, I'm, about to, I'm about to tell you the truth here. So two times, and this is something that I wanted to tell you guys for a long time, okay? Let me tell you, I, I've been wanting to come clean on this because, you know, sometimes you kind of have to just roll with it and hope that nobody figures this out. But uh, I'm going to be honest with you, this is, okay, I'm just going to come clean. I'm just going to say it. So I did it on both of my transmissions and, well, both of them are running absolutely. How does that keep it that hot for that long? I don't get it. What's going on guys? Jimmy here with One Road and today we have a little bit different of a video than I normally do. Normally my videos are very, you know, fix it central, fixing something or replacing something or figuring something out on my vehicles. Something that hopefully helps you guys, I hope. But today I thought I would test out a new format. And this format is more of a conversation style format. And that's why you see my laptop here. And so what I think I'm gonna do is answer some of your comments. So a lot of you comment, and I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Please keep commenting, even if I don't get back to you. I do see them, I do try. There is a heck of a lot of them, but I do try to scroll through them, especially right after my videos get uploaded. I will scroll through and try to answer a bunch of you back. The channel's doing great. It's very healthy, guys. We just passed 200,000 subscribers, which is incredible. Never ever did I think we'd be this far. Man, that's incredible. Praise God. The big thing for me here is really just wanting to answer some of your specific questions. Some of the ones that stand out to me like, man, I could really do a video about that. You know, I feel like it might be beneficial for me just to get on here in this sort of a format. We can have a conversation together and kind of develop this. I'm not saying this is the be all end all. This is the way it's going to be. I may change it up a little bit. What if we did live stuff like this? I don't know. But for right now, I think a good solid, keep it simple, stupid type of format is got my laptop open, got YouTube studio open, and I got your comments pulled up. And so I can see comments and which video they're relating to. And we can just kind of go through some of the ones that stand out to me and answer what you guys ask, or just kind of converse with the things that you guys tell me. Because a lot of times you guys tell me good information. You guys tell me things that I didn't know. And I ask for that I think mostly at the end of my videos, um, I ask, hey, if I did something dumb, if I'm not right in some way, please comment below. Let's start the conversation. Let's, you know, learn together. And that's the whole goal here is so we can all just add to each other through all of this. So anyways, let's get started, shall we? By the way, if you see the Christmas lights behind me and the Santa hat here, it's because we are in December of 2021 and you all know what that means. So the lights and everything is why you see that. If you're somehow watching this like in August of 2022, uh, thank you for watching this video, number one. But number two, that's why you see the lights. So uh, my studio, my shop is not always lit like this with Christmas lights. It just happens to be Christmas time when I'm filming this. So also one other thing, I just looked down at my phone and it reminded me, I left a little bit of room above my head. The reason why I did that is so if you're watching on an iPhone, which I did a poll on the community side of my channel and I asked what device do you guys watch all of my videos on? You know, is it TV? I watch a lot of YouTube on my TV, uh, my smart TV, you know. And, or is it your cell phone or is it just your straight laptop computer? And the overwhelming majority of you guys said cell phone. So one thing that I like to do when I'm on my cell phone, because now we have these full screen phones, right? Um, one thing that I like to do is take that and I'll pinch in, I'll, I'll, you know, pinch to zoom. If you're watching a video and it's being cut off on the sides and you see two black bars and you got a full screen phone, just pinch to zoom and on my iPhone anyway, uh, it'll, it'll actually fill the entire screen from edge to edge. And I love doing that. The, the small, small downside is that it cuts off a little bit of the top and bottom of the frame. But 
if I frame it like I have, I think we're pretty good where you can still do that, pinch to zoom, um, and it'll, it'll fill the whole screen without chopping off my head, I think. So try it out. If it doesn't work, you can always unpinch that. And anyways, okay, so one of the most recent comments I got was regarding uh, my Harbor Freight jack stands, and it's on a video uh, that says, here's why you should change your own oil. So if you wanna see that video, I will link it up here, but you can also go and just type in, probably on YouTube search, here's why you should change your own oil. That video has, I think, quite a few views, if I remember correctly, but someone was commenting on my Harbor Freight jack stands, and uh, this is what they said. Harbor Freight jack stands? I guess you don't value your life much. And I have to say, I do value my life much. I do. Uh, and so I did hear about the Harbor Freight jack stand recall. I did take those jack stands and return them. Um, I did that, I think, twice if I remember back. You know what? I do have a video regarding the new jack stands that I bought that are not Harbor Freight. And they are freaking expensive, but they're US made. Hang on one sec. Okay, um, so this is my new jack stand, and this is what I replaced my Harbor Freight jack stands with. US Jack is the brand, and this is a six ton uh, setup. So jack stands, um, I think this guy actually also commented that, uh, I'll read his comment. It says, for everyone here, jack stands are rated in pairs. So a two ton set is one ton per each stand. Now, I don't know if that necessarily means each stand is rated at one ton and so therefore it makes two tons because we all know the synergy effect, right? So if you're, for example, lifting a dumbbell of 30 pounds with one arm and you go to a barbell, you can lift much more most of the time than 60 pounds with a barbell. Because of the synergy effect, uh, you're, you can maybe, let's just say you can lift 80 pounds with a barbell. And it kind of, I've heard that same scenario with a horse one horse can pull, I don't know, let's just call it 4,000 pounds, um, but two horses can pull 10,000, right? So there's a synergy effect where um, it's not just one plus one equals two in that regard. So this is a six ton set, doesn't necessarily mean that one jack stand can hold three tons, but both of them together, I'm pretty sure I did the same research. Jack stands are rated as a set, a set of two. And so this set, uh, is a six ton set. So I got six tons on these, uh, these bad boys. They're expensive though. I wanna say they're in the maybe mid $200 range, but they are US made. I mean, these things are solid and surprisingly haven't had to use them all that much. So uh, I think I've used them once or twice now, but it's good to have because when you need them, you need them. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay, guys, you know what? These Yeti cups, okay, they're great. They look great. They're built well. Um, but it's almost like, you know, it, they've created a problem. They work too well. I mean, I'll be three, four hours into my boiling tea, and it still burns my mouth. Any of you guys have that? Oh! That just burned my throat. Wow. Wow. Um, Gonna have to wait another four hours before I can drink that. Okay, what does this test have to do with using the right oil? This comment refers back to a video that I recently just uploaded called, This One Test Can Tell If You're Using the Right Oil. And what I do in that video is an actual compression test of the engine, not motor, but engine, in my 1995 GMC Suburban, that engine is a Chevrolet, or, or we'll call it a GM 350, the 5.7 liter. It's a throttle body injected engine. We all know that it was made for many, many years, uh, you know, turned into the Vortec with sequential fuel injection and all that stuff. But anyways, a motor that is basically the heart of Chevrolet, of GM, General Motors, for a long time. We're now on to the 5.3, which has been uh, a fantastic motor, which I also have my 2003 Suburban anyway. Uh, what does this have to do with using the right oil? So 
I think I touched on this in the video. And again, the video is called This One Test Can Tell. If you're using the right oil, search it in the YouTube search thing or just go to my channel. What it has to do with using the right oil is if your compression is low, right? So if you have excess wear inside of your cylinder and your piston rings have excess wear and they're not holding compression or the compression is very low, then potentially you're either not changing your oil enough or you're using very poor oil, like maybe uh, a conventional oil and you're letting it go for way too long and the lubricating abilities are being broken down and you know not working correctly. Um, so what I mean by that is that if you have a terrible compression, uh, you're probably not doing it right, right? I mean, so obviously there's an anomaly that happens from time to time and there's just a motor, no matter what you do, it's just gonna break down. Um, but in an instance where I, I would imagine, this is, this is all my opinions, obviously too, guys, but I would imagine that if you have very low compression, and your, let's just say your motor has 100,000 miles, right? Very typical for like, hey, it's, a, it's my truck's hitting 100,000. Let's sell it and get rid of it and get something new because I don't want any problems, right? That's very typical, the 100,000 mark. Um, check the compression. How's the compression doing? My truck seems to check out. Uh, that thing is uh, amazing. I'm in, in continually impressed by that truck, seriously. But I would imagine that if the compression was very low, it would mean that there was inadequate lubrication in the cylinder walls between the cylinder walls and the piston rings. We all know that the piston rings are what seal against the cylinder walls. We do need a thin layer of oil to keep lubrication there. Um, and so if my compression's low, it's because I'm not using the right oil. I'm not, I don't have enough oil, which means I'm not checking my oil enough, or I'm letting it go way too long, which means the oil has lost its lubrication abilities and or maybe my filter is freaking clogged and there's no oil able to get up anyway. That is what it has to do with not using the right oil. So that's the answer to your question. Okay, here's one. Using wax and wash diluted with water to clay bar your car? LOL, the whole point of clay bar is to remove the contaminants and degreasing your clear coat, not add to it. So I did a video and again, I'll try to link all these videos. I don't know if I'm able to link every one of them up here, but I'll try to link this one here. It, the video is called, This is Better Than a Clay Bar and Only Costs Two Bucks. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. The thumbnail is me pulling up uh, this product, which you'll have to go check out. He's commenting because I'm using, I think, soapy water to lube the clay bar product in this video. And I think his thing, his, his, like what he's saying is the clay bar is supposed to remove all the old, you know, waxes and all that stuff off your car to give you a, a clean surface so you can apply new good stuff. But what I'm using the clay bar for is to remove like the sap and all the gunk that falls basically out of the trees, all the, you know, pollen and all that stuff that gets stuck to our paint when we park outside. That's what I'm using a clay bar for. And I like this product that I used in this video. It's totally not made for that, but it is very unique, very cheap. And for me, it works really well. I haven't had a problem with it at all. And so being that it works so well, it, it is a little bit hard to work with because it warms up really easily and starts to break down, but you just reform it and you can really use that and take off a lot of contaminants off the surface of your paint very quickly, very easily. What I usually do is I'll be washing my car with a microfiber and then I'll come right back over it with my little clay bar and then just kind of use that almost like a, a car washing um, thing too, you know? Uh, it works good for me. Another comment on here's why you should change your own oil. Um, so go check that out, type that in. Here's why you should change your own oil. So this commenter said, where did you dump the old oil change? Of course, in the rain gutter. Isn't that what everyone does? Uh, no, that's not. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Do not dump your old used oil down the rain gutter. Absolutely illegal and terrible for not only the streets and your neighbors, but terrible for the environment. Don't do that. Don't dump it in your backyard. Don't dig a hole. Don't do any of that stuff. This is what you do do with it, okay? You keep it in your oil drain bucket. Hopefully it's an enclosed one where you can close the lids. You can get those for very cheap 
As a matter of fact, I'll link them down in the description below, but you can get those for very cheap at Home Depot, um, any auto parts store, and you take that to O'Reilly or AutoZone, anywhere where they recycle used oil, it's totally free. Okay, I don't know if, how not everyone knows this. Maybe it, people just don't, I don't know. But I'm telling you now, take that down to O'Reilly, that's where I go. And you can simply just say, hey, I've got some oil that I need to get rid of, and they say, they walk you back to the back, and sometimes they do it for you, sometimes you do it. So I usually bring a set of gloves, some paper towels in my pockets just so I can kind of wipe things and clean things up uh, after I'm done dumping that oil because it's basically a big giant metal trash can with a hole in the top and you just dump it in there. And it's pretty clean. I mean, they try to keep those pretty clean back there. I'm actually impressed. Um, but that's what I do with it. I, every time I drain all my oil out of my vehicles and my, my drain bucket gets full, which I think it's like a 17 quart drain bucket, don't quote me on that, I will uh, take that down there and, um, and dump it and then wipe it clean and get ready for the next oil change. So that's what I do with it. Okay, one of the most commented questions I get is regarding uh, my transmission flush videos. I think I have two of them out there. This one in particular, this comment is on the one called, doing this will destroy your transmission. I just want to be clear here. The title of that video is a play on the fact that everybody says, never, ever, ever flush your transmission. Everybody says that. Never, ever flush your transmission. Here's the thing. I'm pretty sure what they're talking about when they say that is what is called a power flush. And that is when you hook up a machine that is literally meant to flush your transmission. And from my understanding, and don't quote me on this, that machine actually pumps forcefully, pumps fluid back through your transmission the opposite way that it should be going, I think, and thereby flushing all that old contamination out and getting rid of it. I don't know exactly what it does, I don't. This is just stuff that I've read, and, uh, but it's a power flush nonetheless. What I did wasn't a power flush. What I did in the video was, maybe you could call it a passive flush. I had the truck running. I think I had it in neutral. I'd have to refer back to the video because it's been a while since I did that. Uh, but I had it in neutral, I believe. Keep your foot on the brake and shift it. I can't remember, but I'll, okay. The video is called, doing this will destroy your transmission. Go and search that video um, and you'll see the video. It has, I think, millions of views, if not close to it. So a good video. But again, the question is, how is my transmission doing after I did these flushes? Now, here's the thing, here's the kicker. I've done this twice, okay? I have two Suburbans. One's a 95 GMC Suburban that I already mentioned in this video. It has the GM 4L60E, right? And I also have a 2003 Chevrolet Suburban, which has also the 4L60E. So you can see a, a wide gap there in time because GM had switched over from the 5.7 liter to the newer and probably a lot of people would say better 5.3 liter, which definitely is nicer to drive, don't get me wrong. Uh, a lot more power, a lot more responsive, just, I mean, all around a great engine. Uh, but both of those trucks have the same 4L60E transmission. I did this same flush on both of those transmissions and both, let me tell you, okay, I, I'm, about to, I'm about to tell you the truth here. So two times, and this is something that I wanted to tell you guys for a long time, okay? Let me tell you, I, I've been wanting to come clean on this because you know, sometimes you kind of have to just roll with it and hope that nobody figures this out. But uh, I'm going to be honest with you. This is, okay, I'm just going to come clean. I'm just going to say it. So I did it on both of my transmissions. And, well, both of them are running absolutely fantastically. <laughs> both of them. So I've done it twice. The same method I did on both vehicles. We'll call it a passive flush. And yes, I know I, I led you up to that one, but I did it twice, okay? Twice on the same, essentially the same. I know, I know those transmissions could have 
slight variances and differences in them, right? Because they're made so, you know, they usually improve things that are, are wrong. But I got to say, the 4L60E in my 95 is an extremely smooth transmission. Um, but both of them, both Suburbans, drive, shift, you know, everything that a transmission does flawlessly, okay? Now, both vehicles have under 100,000 miles. I think my GMC, the 95, is only at about uh, 87,000 original miles, so very, very low miles for the truck. And I think my 2003 is, let's call it 90... 5,000 miles, I think, 95,000. So still very, very low original mileage for the engine and transmission. And the transmission, um, you know, the transmission on my 2003, every once in a blue moon will have a slightly solid shift, I think, into, I don't know if it's from second to third or first to second. Anyways, um, not a problem. But uh, I just noticed, the only reason why I noticed it is because on my 95, it doesn't seem to do that as much. Um, but that being said, it feels solid. It shifts smooth 99.9% .9 of the time. I don't ever even think about the truck shifting. It's just every once in a very blue moon. And that's usually when I'm like going around a turn, kind of slowing down, take my foot off the gas and then hit it again. And maybe it shifts down and shifts back up. I don't know. Um, it's a four speed transmission with overdrive. So... I don't know a whole lot about transmissions, but that being said, the question I get probably the most, the most that when I'm scrolling through these things, one of those questions that I always see from a lot of people is like, what happened to your vehicles after you did this? And the answer is they, they still shift because they always shifted great and they still shift great. So in my case, nothing happened. Um, that being said, I do understand how a lot of people can have a problem once they flush their transmission. And I know you already know this, guys. I, I know that. I know that. I know you already know this. But the reason why a lot of people have a problem after flushing or just changing the fluid and filter, just dropping the pan, change, you know, letting that fluid run into your bucket, change the filter, put the pan back up, add new fluid to top it off, basically, you're not getting all the fluid change, but it's a normal, normal thing. Um, but the problem that people have is your transmission was already fried to begin with, okay? A lot of people are having an issue, and so they go, huh, let me change the fluid, and maybe the issue will go away. Well, maybe the issue was a lot more, a lot worse than you thought it was. And from what I understand, you guys probably know way more than I do, but from, I, from what I understand is a lot of that debris that's in that fluid at that point is actually helping those discs or plates or whatever you want to call them, the clutch discs to, to, to work. It's actually helping it to be a little more sticky in there, I guess. And so your transmission has been functioning because the fluid was so dirty. Now, here's the problem. Here's where I, here's where to me, I'd rather change my fluid and let there be a problem if there's going to be a problem because I don't want there to be a problem. Say I, I'm like, man, you know, my truck runs okay. Let's take it on a long road trip, three, 400 miles. Let's, let's take it on a 1500 mile road trip, right? You get 800 miles from home and boom, your transmission fails regardless of whether you changed that fluid or not. So your transmission fails, you're 800 miles from home. You don't have a lot of cash. Now what, right? Where do you take your car or, or you pulled over on the side of the road? Let's say you're on the freeway, right? That's a terrible situation. In my case, I would rather change that fluid, right? Have it break down on me in my hometown at the worst case scenario. Hopefully it's just in your garage and you know, it's right there. You know, then you can try to deal with it right there yourself or call a tow truck, have it towed to your local dealership or local transmission shop and have it fixed there. To me, that seems like a much better option is to deal with the problem rather than you know, okay, something's weird, but I'm not going to touch it. And then it happens on a long road trip. You're 800 miles from home and Bob's your uncle. So that's my whole two cents on transmission flushes. Again, I am no professional guys. You know this. I say this a lot. I'm no professional. I'm just a dude in a garage with a camera and some tools and a truck. And 
you know, the will to work on my trucks and you know, actually, the love to work on my, I love working on my trucks, guys. My vehicles, I call them trucks. I know they're SUVs, right? But, but reality is my Suburbans are crew cab, short bed with a permanent shell on the back. That's, that's what a Suburban is, right? We got a crew cab, so four doors. We got a short bed, which is the most desirable. When you want a pickup truck and someone wants four doors, they always want a short bed. Unless you have something very specific you need, they always want a short bed. So to me, a Suburban is the best of all worlds. You have a totally enclosed and lockable camper shell, and permanent, by the way, um, obviously downside to that, but there's also many upsides to that, right? It's warm, it's easy to access from the inside, you can sleep in the back, you can lay down the seats. Um, secure, more secure than a camper shell, in my opinion, I guess, um, and it looks good. You know, it's, it's like, it's, I think it's the perfect sized vehicle. The new Jeep Gladiators, the, the four-door trucks, those are awesome. I can't wait till they come out with an extended version, you know, of the Jeep Wrangler four-door that uh, is essentially a longer enclosed solid cab, you know, like the Suburban. If they did that on the Jeep, oh my goodness, I know they would sell a ton of those. Uh, those Gladiators are incredible, um, but if they made a, a longer version of that Wrangler um, with that same extended wheelba uh, wheelbase and extended bed, but with a the hard shell on that from the factory, that would be sick. I mean, that would be sick. They would sell a ton of those, and they're probably going to do it at some point. I think they should make the Jeep even a little wider, um, but you know, that's for another video. Anyways, guys, that is enough for this one. Did you like this format? Uh, did you like me answering some of your questions and some of your comments? I know I didn't answer a whole lot because I quite honestly was long winded here, but I'm just testing this format out. Um, I think it should be fun. I think it could be fun. I think it could develop into something very interesting. Let me know, um, comment down below on this video. Let me know, should this format be something that I, I get into? We could talk about the new trucks that come out. We could talk about uh, anything like that, anything automotive related, especially comments from you guys. Uh, I feel like this is a really good way to engage with you and have a conversation. Hopefully you liked it. I, I had fun, I did, I had fun. I got a couple lights set up. I got some Christmas lights in the back. I got a desk here, I'm in my shop. This was fun uh, for me. So hopefully it was for you, if it was, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It helps this video. It helps the channel. It helps the long-term overall everything. Check the comment section below for more information. If you're not a subscriber and you're seeing this, consider subscribing, guys. This is One Road. I'm Jimmy, and I will see you in the next one.